In a world not too far removed from the chase of Silicon Valley, Jack Ma takes a rare moment to unwind. These days, he spends most of his time on planes. He's one of China's leading internet entrepreneurs, and he has good reason to kick back. Global investors are hammering at his door. I mean, a lot of speeches in China. Tell everybody, nobody can stop this revolution. Jack is amongst a growing band of self-made private entrepreneurs challenging the traditional way of doing business in China. The biggest impact of the internet on China is the growth of private capital and private entrepreneurship in, in a new form, which is not just running small corner shops, but actually running companies which may employ hundreds or eventually thousands of people but do not have a penny of state ownership. This is very new. China has declared the information industry its new lifeblood, with predictions of 20% yearly growth for the next decade. Wall Street may be reassessing its love affair with the World Wide Web, but on the Great Wall, the lure is getting stronger by the day. That phenomenal growth could also have a downside. There is a control freak element to this government. You could say it stems from the communist uh, heritage, but increasingly it's impossible for the government to maintain the pretense of very tight controls over this industry when the reality is that the internet loves a challenge. It's a challenge that's creating untold freedom for millions and wealth for a handful. And it could produce a brave, new and for the Communist Party very unpredictable world. Jack Ma has just stepped off a plane from Silicon Valley. How are you? Hi, nice to meet you. It's a trip he's made dozens of times since he launched Alibaba.com in March last year. You see, Internet is a treasure island, and nobody knows the password to it. So Alibaba, we open password for those business people, for anybody there. His mind is chock full of ideas. He's impatient to get back to work, even though Alibaba's research center is still a two-hour drive away. Two hours off the plane, he's back in the research center where there's a frantic search for his office keys. What the key? Before long, he gets down to work with his engineers, discussing the progress of a new website design. Five years ago, Jack was an English teacher who became obsessed with the latest Western craze to hit China. He hit on an idea to create a global online marketplace for small and medium-sized businesses. Today, his dot-com empire takes in Hong Kong and Silicon Valley, while international investors have poured millions of dollars into his venture. We change the way business people are doing work. Usually, if I, am in, in, if I am an export, I have to go all the way to other nations to attend a trade affairs. What I do today is communicate with people on the internet. Everything is just through clicks. So, life has changed. Alibaba, like scores of Chinese dot coms, is after a share of the fledgling e commerce market, a market that promises huge profits because of the size and growing wealth of China's population. But those profits all depend on how the central government chooses to regulate the Internet.
So on the one hand, you have this desire for the economic benefits and the, to increase China's power. On the other hand, you have this, this very deep, deep-seated fear of losing control. And unfortunately, the two either, depending on your perspective, come together or there, there is a fundamental contradiction. In Duncan Clark's view, the central government is still grappling with how to regulate the internet so that it creates profit for the state without undermining it. The power of the internet was revealed in a dramatic and unusual fashion last year, when more than 10,000 practitioners from the Falun Gong spiritual group formed a silent circle of protest around Zhongnanhai, Beijing's central leaders' compound. Falun Gong's followers had grown from a handful to tens of millions because it effectively harnessed the internet for communication. The protest was the single biggest challenge to the party in 10 years, and now the government blocks Falun Gong's websites together with other key controversial sites relating to Tibet, Taiwan and human rights. So once it gets very popular, they start blocking it. But there's no way they can block all the sites that they want to block, um, because there's too many of them. It would slow down the internet to a great extent in China. And also, uh, it's very hard to find all of these sites. But the big sites, the really popular portals and things like that, there has to be some level of control for the government. As chat rooms spring up around the country, so too does the risk of politically sensitive discussion on issues like political reform, dissent and human rights. To reduce the threat of subversion on the net, sites which cater to ordinary consumers are developing innovative ways to censor or, in their parlance, clean up their sites. The main job is to help the people within the groups to provide the membership services and to clean up the garbages. One of the most popular sites in China, NetEase, which claims to have up to a million members, uses a system of so-called class monitors. Every member, when, we, when they register with us, they have to agree on the contract we play there. They're specifically indicated certain things they're not allowed to do in that, to personal insult, pornography. So that things also it has to be within the PRC laws. Despite the atmosphere of self-censorship, many young people are discovering freedom on the net like they've never dreamed of. Though it's not strictly illegal, homosexuality is still a social taboo in most parts of China. And yet, gay culture is flourishing in cyberspace. Roger works for a technology company by day, and by night he operates one of more than a hundred websites aimed at gay men. In the Chinese culture, you can't find enough information to tell you what kind of person you are, what kind of life you are, and you can live with the same people outside. They can live very healthy lives. So I started to do a Chinese website to help this website to help this people. He doesn't want to be recognized for fear of being harassed or treated as a social outcast. As long as Roger doesn't display sexually explicit material on the website, he has more freedom on the internet than he does in real life. And this newfound freedom is becoming more difficult to control. Uh, 呃，它是可以有一定的控制的。那么，首先是它对他认为这个问题需要控制。而相比同性恋问题来说，那个问题，民主问题要重要的多。所以，嗯，它可以采取一定的措施，但是不是绝对，不是完全能够做得到的。企
These internet professionals meet regularly to discuss new developments in technology and government regulation. Web designer Lin Hai knows the area better than most. Two years ago, he was jailed for inciting the overthrow of state power after he passed 30,000 email addresses to an online democracy journal in the United States. Seven months after his release, Lin Hai enjoys relative freedom again, despite frequent visits from the police. His favorite way to pass the time is with his wife and young son. He's restarted his internet business mainly to find a job for himself, and he still clings to the dream of a more open society. Freedom is my permanent dream. I think I won't cancel. Generally, the Chinese government is very fond of Controlled. This is where Jack Ma was first exposed to foreign tourists, where he first learned to speak English 20 years ago. Today, he shows me the traditional way of sealing a business deal, over a drink or a round of mahjong. It's perhaps the one part of doing business he won't be able to change. Despite the uncertainty of government regulation, he believes as long as there's money to be made, the Chinese government won't stifle this opportunity. One thing, no matter whatever changes, every government, every people love to have a business to see the prosperity of the business, right? You may have political problems here and there, but nobody wants to have business problems. The one remaining obstacle or barrier perhaps to uh, unfettered growth is seen as government control and regulation but I don't think this government is going to just surrender control or walk away um, this is a Leninist government still which basically believes in control over all other things There are high hopes that the lure of a technology-led boom will allow the Internet the freedom it needs to change Chinese society, even if, for the moment, hype rules. The goal really is to um, gain as much eyeballs as possible. Where we got half a million dollars from the United States. What is our goal? Our goal is, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> China is not going to change revolutionally. Two, we have over 30 million people using it. So the real revolution hasn't even started yet. No. I can hear the step, but not started yet. The internet has already created a pluralistic society that in Chinese terms is revolutionary, even after 20 years of rapid economic transformation. All that's needed now is for the brave new cyber world to be beamed down to Earth. <laughs>